Thank you, April. So we're talking about changing the world and what we've talked about is how um, really the way we're going to bring about change in the world is through change in ourselves. And uh, I was just thinking just now about how what we're doing in some ways, the first week we talked about changing our look. So we weren't, it wasn't about being showy, it was about being Jesus. And we, then we talked about our view and how we looked at others and we talked about our path. And each week we've been talking about change, 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 which is not necessarily all that comfortable, is it, when we start to talk about changing. This morning I came in and my microphone, the one I like to wear, was hooked up to a different box than what it normally was. It was hooked up to wireless 4 instead of wireless 2. And I, and it bothered me, so I said, Raphael, can I use wireless 2? And he said, yes. We're just not good at change. But change is what's needed for the transformation of the world. And I, as I was thinking in between services and just now, it's kind of like uh, a peeling an orange is what we're doing here. We're peeling away that outer skin that we've created to come to the fruit. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between expansion and multiplication. And we pray that God will bless us as we enter into this conversation, this holy conversation with him. Let's pray. God, you unsettle us constantly. Change began with your call upon Abraham and continues upon your call on each one of us today. You call us to be something different. Help us to hear your words today, to be honest, open, and willing to be yours, this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's, let's just get it out there. Genesis 1, 27, 28 starts with this, or says in the middle of it, be fruitful and multiply. Anybody have any idea what that usually means to us? Have kids. Yeah, that's what we always say, right, Kevin? We have kids. And, and, and so that was the premise. In fact, that's the premise of some churches is our goal is to have kids. Well, if you look at that passage and look at the wording in that passage, in that particular spot especially, the first time he says be fruitful and multiply has nothing to do with just children. It means to multiply. Period. Later in the passage, or later in the chapter, talks about multiplying Abraham's seed. And certainly that's probably learn, leaning towards more towards children, but I'll even challenge that after a while. It talks about being fruitful and multiplying is what God calls us to. So one of the first things that God speaks to us and says to us is to be fruitful and multiply. Now, so, so when we hear that, we understand that there's a way God plans for us to move forward. Now today, as we talk between expansion and multiplication, i got to tell you that what we've been doing is, is really expanding. For the last 15 years uh, or so, there's been this great emphasis on great big churches, the mega churches, like, uh, like Willow Creek, probably the first of many, and Saddleback. And, and now there are more and more of these mega churches out there. But the problem is when you expand or make a great big ministry, great big church, there's tension. The thing that happens is on the wall of, of every balloon that is blown up, what happens? There starts to be tension there. And we can grow to a certain size. <laughs> okay, everyone take a big deep breath. First service, I jumped about six inches in the air and I even knew it was coming. But the, but the fact of the matter is, with every giant church out there is a giant group of concerns and buildings and, and all sorts of things happen that put attention on the ministry. 
there, it's the same is true in our lives. There are, the rule is, we always hear the 80-20 rule, that 20% of the people do 80% of the work. I think it's higher than that. I think out of 100 people, 92 of them are sitting back relaxing and 8 of them are doing everything in the church. Now what's that do to those 8 people? You know who I'm talking about. You know who they're, they're sitting with you here today. People who do everything. And it's not just the people who are serving the church on that side. It comes this direction as well. I've got a friend that's a retired pastor I just met. He can tell you what we tend to do is we sit our, spend our lives expanding and expanding and, and people expect it of us that we grow to this point. So one day my head's going to go... <laughs> but that's not God's plan. God doesn't say expand, make yourself great, make your churches great. In fact, the word expand doesn't exist in the Bible. What we are called to do, and what we should do, is we should work smarter instead of working harder, both as a church and as individuals. We need to be about that kind of following. Multiplication is not about us growing bigger or the church growing bigger. It's about the kingdom being realized. Multiplication happening naturally. Spread the gospel, not the church walls. God didn't say, make big churches. I didn't see it anywhere, not even in Genesis. What God did say is that we are to be fruitful, be fruitful, and multiply. The natural growth process is by multiplication. When I was born or you were born, we didn't come out as one great big cell that started out and it just kept getting bigger. That cell divided and divided again and so on and so forth. And so through multiplication, we were created, perfectly created by God. And all of nature does the same thing. It is by multiplication of cells. It is by multiplication. So it is a natural thing that is built into us. And, and God wants us to multiply our efforts, not to expand buildings. Did you know that for the first 300 years in the church there weren't buildings? That, that as the church growed, it grew, and some of its most rapid growth in history, if you look at it in percentages, was without buildings. It was against the law to be a church anyhow. How could you build a building? It was then the church, and they got to be pretty big. They had a lot of people, but they gathered together, and the church was the people. It wasn't this thing. And those people grew and grew remarkably because they went out and told others. And they talked to others. And they multiplied their numbers. They, they continued to grow that way. And, and so that instead of one person doing all the work, it had everybody involved growing, growing the faith growing what it was to be a church. Imagine that you had a rope tied around you and you were just a, off the edge of a cliff and slowly slipping away. How many people would like one great big strong guy or how many people would like, like 30 people on the rope, pulling the rope? Which would you rather have? 30, yeah. And that's, that's what we, do. but that's not the way we do church. We kind of do church like the guy up here should make sure everybody joins and gets to be a part of it. You know what? This is the opposite of the way church is supposed to work. This is the activity. This is the Word of God coming out to presume that the activity will flow out. And that's, that's what God calls us to do. That, that's where we should be. So, so in multiplication, some things are going to need to increase and some things are going to need to decrease. What, what needs to increase? Luke 17, 5, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. To be fruitful, we have to have faith in God. 
to be fruitful, we have to have that faith. And so that has to increase in us. And when we study and we spend time together and we listen to God's word and we pray, we do all those things we talked about the other week, our faith increases. That's necessary for multiplication. What must this decrease? John 3.30 answers it very well. He must increase, but I must decrease. What do you think that means? It's not all about me. Absolutely. What else? What does that mean that I must decrease? Well, that's a great answer, Gloria. That's sort of that self-centered kind of world that we live in, right? Anybody have dreams and have a special plan that you know how your life is going to go? You've already planned it out? My brother knew he was going to be an attorney at the time he was a sophomore in high school. We have to let go of what we think is the right plan. We have to decrease in our wishes and want list and let God increase in us, right? More of Jesus, less of me. That's necessary in this multiplication process. So if we do those things and we start and we start multiplying, what's going to be multiplied? We go to Acts where we watch the church grow. The growth of the beginning and the birth of the church and the rapid growth of the church happens in Acts. In Acts 12, 24, it says in the New American Standard Bible, but the word of the Lord continued to grow and to be multiplied. When we go out and start telling people the story, and what story do we tell? We tell them also about, we tell them about Jesus Christ, but we tell them our story. You cannot go out there with the King James Version of the Bible and win people over to Jesus Christ. Thou, be thou, they're going to walk away the first thou out of your mouth.